Good evening. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to our Veterans Memorial Intermediate Attendance Boundary Committee update. I'm Chris Hines, Deputy Superintendent. Also on the call this evening is Mr. Chris McCord, our Assistant Superintendent for Operations, Mr. Rod Chavez, our Director of Community Outreach, and Ms. Sarah Blakelock, our Director of Communications. So uh, really, we'll try to move through this information fairly quickly this evening. And I want to say thank you for joining us. First of all, a couple of quick reminders. If you didn't join us on the last time, I'll hit a couple of highlights. Uh, you know, as we want to kind of summarize, the district's pretty crowded. We are currently uh, roughly half of the campuses are at or over capacity. We are, as a district, at 101% of our district's overall capacity, utilizing uh, roughly uh, over 200 uh, portable classrooms, which is about 4,000 seats or roughly four. Uh, elementary schools. And this is kind of a quick look at our district's map, our, our boundaries for the school district as a whole. And you can see the areas highlighted in red are areas that are experiencing fast growth. And uh, you can see it spread out pretty much across the entire school district. And this is the Caney Creek feeder zone. We'll talk a little bit about Caney Creek feeder zone this evening. But again, there's a lot of growth that's happening in this part of our school district and will for the next few years. So we're going to experience some very rapid growth, uh, which really brings us to this, this whole process, right? Um, we have Moorhead Junior High, Grangerland Intermediate over capacity, Austin Elementary, and Creighton Elementary are, are over capacity. And Caney Creek is quickly moving in that direction. It's not there yet, but it's, it's, it's filling up. And uh, so to deal with the growth, we know we'll open uh, Barton Elementary in 2024, and that will relieve some of the crowding at Austin and Creighton. So that's coming up in 2024. So we know we'll be back uh, to work on that rezoning. But tonight we're gonna to talk a little bit about Veterans Memorial Intermediate. And, and really there's two parts that are related to this. One is Moorhead Junior High School, which is currently at 133% of its capacity with 11 portable classrooms and Grangerland Intermediate, which is at 112% of its capacity with 10 portable classrooms. And, and really to deal with that crowding, um, we're going to open a new junior high school and kind of to go back in time a little bit uh, the current Moorhead Junior High School actually opened in 2001 as Grangerland Intermediate School. And, and then in 2008, Grangerland Intermediate moved to its current location next to Milam Elementary, and the current Grangerland Intermediate became Moorhead Junior High School. And so uh, that building, the current Moorhead Junior High School, is going to convert to Veterans Memorial Intermediate. So this is we're all familiar with that campus. It's uh, right there on Old Houston Road uh, near the intersection of 2090. So that will be repurposed and will open as Veterans Memorial in the fall. And then we are constructing, and it's under construction right now, the new Moorhead Junior High School. And you can see a couple of the pictures of that campus. And it's right there on Grangerland Road behind uh, between Caney Creek High School and the uh, the Milam and Granger Land Complex. And so that's going to open. It's a larger junior high school, and that's where the students are going to move to next year. And that's what will create uh, the opportunity to repurpose Moorhead as Granger Land Intermediate. So to do that, we formed a, an attendance boundary committee. And it's made up of representatives from the various schools that are impacted. We also have some district staff that participate as well in this process. And this group came together really for the purpose of establishing a boundary to populate Veterans Memorial Intermediate School. And, and we also, of course, through this process, want to alleviate crowding at Grangerland Intermediate. And, you know, Grangerland Intermediate has a capacity of 1,050, and so will um, Veterans Memorial and in 2028, we are projected right now to have an enrollment of roughly 2,200 students. So this should serve us between the next five and seven years. Now to do this, the committee looked at several um, considerations, you know, including the capacity input we've had from the community, demographic factors, 
uh, feeder and pattern history, geographical proximity, locations. Uh, we want to minimize impact uh, and looking at thinking about future schools. And again, we know there's going to be future schools in this area uh, due to growth. And redrawing boundaries is a challenging process. It is because that schools are communities. Families often have a history of attending a particular school and families often choose uh, to live where they live to go to certain schools. And in the case of uh, Veterans Memorial and Grangerland, the community is familiar with both of these campuses as uh, Grangerland has been there for a while and Moorhead Junior High is becoming Veterans Memorial Intermediate. So we don't take this task lightly. We look at it very carefully. Um, we do want to reduce the crowding at Grangerland. We do want to populate the school. Um, our goal is to have this recommendation and to go to our board in December. And you know what we do want to assure uh, families that are worried about the new school and going to the new school is that we are committed to having quality, outstanding, quality and outstanding educational programs at both of these intermediate schools. Before we get into the actual recommendation of the committee, I want to at least uh, kind of uh, lead up to that by explaining geocoded. Geocoded is how we populate our projections based on the students that actually currently live in attendance areas. And so when we when we work on attendance boundaries, sometimes the numbers don't match what's currently enrolled. And that's because sometimes we have special programs at a school that students might attend a, a campus to attend that program and they don't live in that area, or uh, teachers may bring their children to school there. And so uh, they do not live in the area that they attend that school. So those are uh, some different reasons why the actual enrollment doesn't match what's uh, geocoded or who lives in the area. But we use geocoded for planning purposes. This is a look at the attendance boundaries of our current elementary. And, and we tried to keep that in mind Something, as I mentioned earlier, we, we know we're going to open Bartlett in 2024. And when we do that, um, we, we are going to impact the attendance boundaries of Austin and Creighton. And uh, this area in the south is San Jacinto and Hope is the purple. And then the, the blue area is Milam. And, and you're going to see in our recommendation that we, we kind of group these elementaries together with Milam being uh, the one in between. So this is our current boundary for uh, the intermediate school. And this is a recommendation of what our committee has come up with and looked at, and we'll share a little bit of background about it. Uh, I'm not gonna read off the areas that are impacted, but you can see um, the area that's in the, the light green is going to be Veterans Memorial Attendance Boundary. And then the area in the red is going to be Granger Lands Attendance Boundary. Uh, this is a, the circle represents kind of a, a, a large um, area of that area of Grangerland, really right there behind Milam and Grangerland and next to the new junior high and the high school. So we wanted to give that, uh, that look so people can kind of see it. And that borders with Old Houston Road coming across in 2090 up, uh, on the top. So we just wanted to make sure that people can kind of see where the dividing line is. But really, as you look at the map, it is the Creighton and Austin will go uh, to Veterans Memorial and we'll have Hope in San Jacinto will feed into Grangerland and then Milam gets split. And you can kind of see the areas that are that are right there. This is a different map, um, basically the same information. And what we want to do is, um, you know, kind of point out we've, we've had eight scenarios that the that we've looked at as a committee. And this one is the one that we're recommending because we wanted to get a little bit more students in terms of balance between the two. So Grangerland uh, geocoded would have 508 students. Veterans Memorial would be uh, under 700 at 663 students. So it just gives you an idea. Both schools. Uh, are large enough that we'll have their own bilingual program, that we anticipate. Um, it gives you just kind of an idea of, of the, the breakdown and the zones and, and how it might look. Uh, Mr. McCord, is there anything you'd like to add about this particular recommendation? 
I just say, you know, first off, thanks to the committee. We spent a lot of time on this. We started the process when we established the boundary zone for hope, which allowed us to uh, accelerate the process to some degree. I want people to know we spent a lot of time looking at where people drive and how you would get in and out. And as I always say, at some point you're going to have to turn left, but we tried to make it make sense from the proximity of where you live to the buildings, uh, traffic flow, and just make it work the best way possible for everyone involved. Also like the breakdown of economically disadvantaged, it works out pretty even. And just to know that the committee even though the board will have the ultimate decision, the, the committee has put a lot of time and effort to come up with this and we're proud of it. And we think it will work for quite a few years. And we're really excited for the people of the community to get to open up a new building uh, for an intermediate school to relieve the crowding at Grangerland. And you can't say enough about what the students and staff at Grangerland have done to make it work. So this is a good deal and it's gonna open in August of next year. Thank you. Yeah, it, and it should go a long way. It'll it'll uh, free up quite a bit of room at both those campuses, and certainly keep us out of portals for a few years. And and just to kind of point out, that's the two. This is two forty two running along here, and uh, Fire Tower Road uh, up in this direction. So um, we 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 do realize that um, this does have kind of a, a an east west and a north south kind of a split to it. Um, but again, it pretty much kind of mirrors some of the existing boundaries. And um, as Mr. McCord mentioned, does um, represent a, a fairly good balance, at least on the socioeconomic side. So just kind of quick, quickly kind of summarize a few things. One, we're talking about fifth and sixth grades. The junior high is moving buildings. So we're not changing the attendance boundaries for the junior high. We're just changing the location of the actual building. Uh, but this is a fifth and sixth grade impact. What about special programs? I mentioned bilingual. Uh, another special programs would be some of our special needs programs. And these are determined on availability based on numbers. And sometimes um, if there's not enough numbers, there might be a program at one school and not at the other. So there is a possibility, but but generally the bait, you know, the 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 basic kind of programs will be at both schools. And then, you know, what about students that want to finish sixth grade at Grangerland? Could they put in for a transfer? The answer is yes, you can put in for a transfer. And typically, if there's a younger sibling that's impacted, so if we have a sixth grader staying to finish at Grangerland, if there's a fifth grade sibling, we would allow um, that student to transfer as well. But again, we do not provide transportation during transfers. We do have a website and uh, it's got a lot of information. If you would like to look at it, we'd certainly encourage you to uh, take some time. You can look up the information about what the recommendation is. And then something that uh, Mr. McCord alluded to is the timeline. And, you know, as, as he mentioned, we started this process, actually got a head start when we were working on the HOPE boundaries. And we were talking about then what might be some possible uh, ways of looking at this. Um, our, our goal right now, we'll be back out and we'll uh, provide an opportunity for people to look at the map on October the 27th at the Moorhead Junior High School Library. And then our uh, intention is to uh, make a presentation at the November 15th board meeting and make a recommendation. Once that happens, we'll start the process. Once it's officially approved by the board, we'll start the process of notifying uh, families who's, you know, who's going to move. We'll work on the next steps of trying to select a principal and, and we'll open up a window for transfers. And then once we think we have projections, that'll start the process of uh, assignments for teachers at, at the various campuses. So that's kind of the timeline. You can see a lot of things have to take place. This is just really the first step of trying to figure out who's going to go to which school and then we'll work on uh, the principal and work on the staffing for that campus. Uh, Mr. McCord, anything else that you'd like to add? No, just we're committed to making both campuses the best they can be. Feel good about both of them and uh, looking forward to uh, getting the process started where people can know where they're going to go and making plans for the future. So exciting times. We're, we're always excited to bring a new campus on. 
and looking forward to that. It should help with uh, traffic in the area and it should help certainly with uh, crowding. And so we're excited about um, Veterans Memorial coming uh, into action. We're also excited about the new junior high school that's going to open up. And um, thank you for being with us on this evening to uh, learn more about uh, this process. And certainly we still have the comment section open up on the website. Um, we are uh, not taking any more scenarios, obviously, because we're at that point now where we're making a recommendation, but uh, we do have the comment section open as well. So thank you for being with us this evening and have uh, a good night.